What's up, everyone? It's that time of year again where Big Brother's, uh, you know, around the corner. They just released the Big Brother 20 uh, cast. And, um, you know, I figured I'm going to at least break it down or just um, see how I think they'll play or where they fit into the, you know, their role in the season, um, you know, and all that stuff, how they're going to fit with other house guests. Uh, first, I want to say thank you, everybody, you know, for checking out the video. Um, if you watched all my BB Can 6 recaps, I did one every single week. I did the same thing where I did a cast, uh, you know, I, I broke down the cast. Uh, exact same thing. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking it out. Um, if you don't know who I am, I played on Big Brother Canada Season 3 and again on Season 5. Um, so I do have a little bit of experience in the house. So I can kind of see, you know, these people's roles, uh, maybe why they were cast, uh, maybe who they'll fit in with, who they won't fit in with, uh, things like that. So I'll just break it down. I only watched uh, the interviews that the house guest did with Ross. So, you know, it's limited knowledge. I know firsthand what it's like to do these interviews. Uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to be authentic. Sometimes you're going to say what's on your mind at that moment. Uh, you know, how you feel you're going to play the game at that moment, whatever your mindset is. Uh, also, these people have never played before, so they have no idea what it's like to get in the house. So you can go into the house saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Uh, whatever, I'm going to get in a showmance, I'm not going to get in a showmance, whatever it is, I'm going to make friends with everyone, I'm not going to do this, whatever your plan is, but then you walk in the house and your entire strategy or plan is completely thrown out the window because of who's in the house, because they have no idea who else is in the house with them, uh, how those people are going to play, what those people's strategies are, uh, and all that stuff. And another thing, when people go in saying that they're they're against showmance is, well, you know what, you can't really uh, fight love. If you if you feel for someone, you feel for someone. That's just the way it is. So, um, you know, it's interesting to see that when people say, nope, there's no way I'm doing a showmance, but then they go in, they're like, yeah, okay, well, I found somebody. And that, again, can throw their game completely out the window. So, again, I'm just watch I, I just watched the Ross interviews, so uh, I don't know what these people are really like. It's like they're quick interviews. The questions they ask or the answers they're giving are only based on the questions they're asked. So it's very, very limited information. But that's what I have and that's what I'm going with. Also, some of the uh, people, I couldn't find their videos. There was Winston, uh, Swaggy C, I believe it was his name. Uh, there was a few of them. Scott, I believe. I couldn't find their videos. So I'm only going based off their written bios which doesn't really tell you too much, but I'll do the best I can with what I have. So anyway, guys, that being said, um, let's get to this. I'm going to start breaking them down. And uh, don't forget to hit that sub and like button because hopefully I can do a few of these videos throughout the season. Kind of, you know, see where the se where the season's at, the players are at at certain points throughout the season. Uh, let's see what's going on. Anyway, guys, thanks again. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first person I want to talk about is Tyler. Um, I have here, it says, uh, he's very single. Um, if he wants to, to win, he'll stay out of a showman's, but he's known to make stupid decisions. Um, okay. Uh, I see him. Okay. I see him as a very social person. He seems very social. Uh, he's going to be one of those people. I think the people are either going to really like him or just completely hate him. And that goes for both sides, uh, from a fan point of view and as a house guest point of view, he seemed a little bit awkward, but at the same time, he seems very like cool and chill and stuff like that. So it just depends on certain house guests. You know, some people are going to be like, ah, oh, turned off by it. And some people are like, oh, this is a cool guy. Uh, let's buddy up kind of thing. So with him, it's very hit and miss. It's hard to read. He seemed pretty awkward in the interview. You know, he's doing weird things with his eyes and stuff, whatever. Uh, it's just, that's the vibe I got. Again, these are just the interviews on Ross, but I don't know. I, I don't know about this guy. I don't think he's going to do very, very well. I don't see him as like this really big player. Uh, I just kind of see him as like kind of like a, not a gimmick cast, but just a, a stereotypical cast, I guess you want to call it. Uh, he's just one of those people that are thrown in the house. Uh, might give a few, a couple episodes of entertainment, but I don't see too much coming out of this guy. I hope I'm wrong. He seems like an awesome guy and someone that I would personally like uh, and get along with. But I, again, when I do these, um, interview or when I do these breakdowns I don't judge them on a personal level because you know a lot of people are, are great people and and I get along with them it's all based on how I think they're going to fit into the game and with the other cast it's nothing personal against these people at all I just go by how I think they're going to fit into the cast and do in the house and this guy it's hit and miss I don't know from the other personalities I see I could see him just really not getting along with anybody, but I can also see him fitting in very well. It's, it's hard to judge this guy. So, um, but anyway, that being said, I, I, I rate, I'm going to give a rating on these people, how I think one to 10, how I think they're going to do uh, in the season. I kind of give this guy like a one or a two, to be honest. I just, I don't know the vibes I got. I didn't see much out of him. He seemed pretty awkward and, and kind of spacey. Um, 
that's just the vibe I got. So I'm going to give this guy a 1 out of 10. Uh, I could even see him being a very, very early boot. Uh, who knows? Uh, only time will tell. But that's Tyler. Uh, I don't see too much out of him, too much potential game-wise. And uh, I don't give him a very high rating. And I think he's going to be an early boot. Okay, so the next house guest I'm going to talk about is Haley. Okay, she says she's only started watching from season 16. So what that means is she only knows Modern Big Brother, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is a completely different game from, say, you know, season 10 back, season even 13, 14, 15 back. Uh, season 16 is more of the Modern Big Brother. It's a different kind of game. It's more... Um, uh, gimmicky, more about entertainment rather than uh, gameplay, I find. I found in the older Big Brothers, there was a lot more gamers, people that were there to play, uh, just a lot more players and better gameplay, 100%. Um, so it's not a bad thing that she's only watched Modern Big Brother. It's not a bad, bad thing. But um, anyway, she says she'll play a similar game to Derek. Of course, that's easy to say. Once again, she hasn't played. She's not been in the house. She has no experience. She has no idea what she's talking about. She obviously likes Derek's game, and she's going to try to mimic Derek's game. But I don't know. I just, uh, you know, when you say when you say you're going to play as one of the best players, it's not going to work out that way. The reason he played that way is because that's part of him and who he is. If you're trying to mimic someone, you're just trying to be somebody else, and you're not being your authentic self, and it comes across and it does come through if you're trying to be somebody else. And I don't think she can pull it off. Um, you know, just simply saying, I'm going to play like this person. No, play like you, do your game, do you, and it'll be more authentic, more genuine, and you'll actually play a lot better because you're making your own decisions rather than trying to be like, what would this person do in this situation? So uh, trying to play like Derek, eh, I don't really like that answer too much. Uh, says she's going to lay low the first couple of weeks and let people that want to play hard and fast uh, kind of get in each other's way, uh, which is the right answer. That's actually the same thing I said uh, when I went to play both times. It's like... You know, just let the big egos and the big personalities get in each other's way. And when that happens, you can kind of take a back seat, watch the show, and pick sides as, you know, each side gets power. So when this side gets power, you're kind of buddying up with them, and you're getting the targets out and keeping yourself safe. Um, things like that. So I like I like what she said. That is actually a really good answer. Um, you know, basically saying, yeah, I'm going to lay back. It's going to give me at least a few weeks of safety uh, while I kind of, you know, get my claws into these people and get my foot into the house and then I can reassess the game and kind of see where everyone falls into place that's a really good answer uh, I definitely give her that uh, she says her strategy can be flexible since she doesn't know who's going in going to be there and it has to adapt but you know what that's what I said too you know it's you have to adapt I mean her, she has all the right answers I mean she has the right answers on paper it's just a matter of fact if she can execute it or not uh, but that is the right answer. You know, she doesn't know who's going in the house. So to go in and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. You can't. You can't do that because somebody can go into the house with a strategy that would completely derail yours. So you can't go in with a set strategy. You have to be adaptable. You have to see who's in that house and play it from there. you got to deal with each person individually different than the next person because you have to connect with people on a personal level and not every person is the same. So you really have to kind of you know change the way you talk to certain people uh, just to kind of buddy up uh, she has the right answers uh, definitely has the right answers she says her weakness could be she doesn't think before she talks and that could get her in trouble that's a big problem this is the big brother house everything you say and do can and will be used against you everything that comes out of your mouth is ammo for somebody else to use against you so you really got to be careful that's a big big downfall for people is they just don't want to keep their mouth shut uh they talk to too many people they talk to the wrong people and the information goes around the house so uh, that is going to be tricky for her if she can't uh if she can't think before she talks that could be very bad um she, she's gonna try to stay out of a showman's but if it happens it happens okay in other words she wants a showman's um i think you know people like like uh that say oh you know if it happens it happens i don't want to say she's necessarily looking for a showman's uh she's a very attractive girl and uh, you know there's some very attractive guys in there and hey it's a big brother house Trust me, you know, it happens because, uh, you know, there's nothing to do in there. And when you're in that house, uh, and I'm not going to say, like, they're all very attractive people for sure, but people look a lot more attractive 
uh, when, you know, you only have seven, eight, ten, whatever it is to pick from. Uh, not to say, you know, they're ugly people or whatever like that. It's not like that. I'm just saying um, your emotions and, and, and everything are just really heightened um, and everything just looks better. And, and, and trust me, it's a different, it's definitely a different environment in there. It's not like the real world at all. Uh, there could be people in the house that you find super attractive or great people personality wise or whatever, but you see them on the street, you wouldn't even look twice. That's just the way it is. I mean, for me, I'm married, uh, going in, so I didn't have that problem, but it just goes for other people in the house. That's just the way it is. Um, so she says she's not looking for a showman, but, uh, if it happens, it happens. Um, what else? She Oh, and here's the other thing. She said she would rather have America love her and lose. Why? Why would you do that? Why are you here? Why are you playing this game for, for these random strangers to like you? Who cares? Who really cares? You're there to do a job. Do the job. You're there to win $500,000. You know, is it really that important for strangers to really like you that you don't want this $500,000? Wrong answer. You're there to play the game to win. Why else are you there? Go win the game. Uh, screw, uh, you know, what people think about you. You know, you can walk down the street and people won't like you just because that's the way it is. That's life. So for someone to say they'd rather go play Big Brother and walk out as, you know, people liking them and not win the money, that's crazy to me. And it's like, why are you even here? Like, that, that's the wrong answer. 100%. Uh, I, I hate hearing that answer because you're there to play the game. Play the game. There are so many people in, around the world that would love to be there to win the money. Go for the game. Go for the money. Uh, that's just the way I see it. Okay, so here's the thing though. I kind of like her answers. Uh, it's just a matter of her executing it properly. So I'm going to give her, you know, I'm going to give her a seven, seven and a half, eight out of ten based on her answers. It's just a matter of execution. Um, you know, and the fact that she said she'd rather have America love her than win, eh, I don't like that too much, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, her answers are right. If she could follow through and, and her head really is in that direction and in that mindset that she has to play that way, she's going to do amazing and very, very well. And if she can follow what she's saying, I think she has a really good shot of winning if she can follow that strategy, uh, which it's hard, kind of hard to do. But I'm going to give her a seven, and a 7 to 8 out of 10 if she can go with that strategy strategy okay the next is Casey I believe this is how I pronounce the names I hope that's how I'm pronouncing I hope I'm pronouncing it right uh, Casey she says she's been watching since season one she's very competitive she loves people she loves games she feels like this is her year this is a year for her for big things she's a pro football player uh, she hates cocky arrogant people you know they're gonna put someone like that in the house for sure it's big brother and here's the thing you know when they do cast you they ask you what kind of people you like what kind of people you don't like who you get along with who you don't get along with all that kind of stuff they know what they're doing these casting people know what they're doing they want to have people that you're going to get along with in the house and they want to put people in there that you're not going to get along with so it's a, it's a show it's, it's a business it's a tv show they want you to butt heads so when you say you don't like and i am the same i don't like cocky arrogant people as well so when they say that you know they're going to make sure they find the cocky arrogant person and and one of the cockiest and one of the most arrogant people to put in there to get under your skin so you guys fight. So she says she doesn't like cocky, arrogant people. That's a common answer. Not too many people do, uh, but it is Big Brother. Um, what else she say? She takes, it takes a lot to get under her skin, but she will hold her ground. So, uh, you know, people are going to try to get under her skin, especially arrogant people. And if she says she's going to hold her ground, maybe that means she's going to react. And that's what these people want. People want the reaction, uh, you know, throw them off their game and all that stuff. So hopefully she can keep her composure, just kind of let these people run their mouth. Um, let's hope she can do that. Uh, says she can be a chameleon in there and be nerdy or whatever. And that is huge. I actually mentioned that when I was uh, critiquing one of the other players was uh, you have to be a chameleon. You have to be able to adapt with everybody. You know, the nerdy guy, you got to kind of buddy up and be kind of nerdy with them. You know, the whatever person, you got to do the same thing. That's just the way it is. Find that common ground. And for myself too, you know, I played uh, semi-pro sports, uh, you know, in my life and I'm a huge gamer. So I know how to deal with both aspects. Not to say gamers, gamers are all nerdy. That's not what I'm saying, but I get 
both us, you know, the athletes and the and the gamers. Like I, I, I get it. I know how to deal with each person differently. And the fact that she can do that, that's huge because Big Brother is a social game. It's a it's a huge, huge social game. If you have people believing that you're on their side, they won't want to get rid of you. So the fact that she can connect and bond uh, with all sorts of people, that is huge. So I really like to hear that. Uh, that's that's very very huge. Um, she says uh, she knows it's a game and she has to remind herself at all times, you do what you got to do. It's a game. Bingo. Bang on answer. It's a game. When it's all said and done, these people are not your friends. Uh, you might bond with one or two or three people maybe, but I promise you at the end of it, you don't talk to these people. Yeah, you'll message them here and there, how are you, whatever. At first, you guys are all best buddies. You're going to want to have group chats together and blah, blah, blah. Trust me. You fast forward three, four or five months, you end up talking to one, maybe two of them, if that, and that's just the way it is. You might throw a random text here and there. That's the way it is. I like that she gets it's a game. I like that. Um, that means her mind's right. I really, really, really like this girl. Just, just her answers, her mindset and everything. Uh, I'm going to give her like an eight, eight and a half. Um, as long as she keeps what she says, you know, uh, she seems very, she says she's very competitive. She's a pro football player. That's, that's big. So, um, I think she can do well. I think she can find herself in the right alliance. I think I can see her in the majority alliance and uh, that'll keep her safe for a while. Uh, I have high hopes for her. I think she's going to do well. Uh, and I hope to see a good competitive side come out of her like she says she is. Um, that's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing how she plays. I hope she does well. Uh, so yeah, I give her an 8, 8 and a 5, roughly around 10 out of 10. And uh, I'm excited to see what she can do for sure. Okay, so now we're at JC. Okay, he says he's very social and thinks he can make it, question mark. He's kind of asking, okay. Uh, wants to play under the radar, but also says he likes to talk a lot. So basically, it's not going to happen. If you like to talk a lot, you're not going to go under the radar. You're going to be very noticeable. Uh, people are going to hear your voice. Depends how much you talk, what you talk about. Maybe he annoys people, and he's going to get the boot. Um... Says he likes to talk, wants to play under the radar, not really going to happen. He says like about 650 times in this five-minute interview. Eh, it's going to get under people's nerves for sure. So we'll see how that goes. His biggest threat is anyone tall, he says. Okay, I'm not going to make short jokes, but okay. Anyone tall is his biggest threat. Okay. Says staying under the radar has never been done before. Okay. And wants to be the first person to do it. All right. Okay. This guy's lost me here. I'm done. Okay. Uh, no. This guy, I don't know if he's watched an episode before. He says, staying under the radar has never been done. Uh, every season, 50% of the cast tries to do it. If not, 80% of the cast tries to do it. Uh, whatever. Um, okay. So here's the thing, though. I'll tell you something. I actually kind of like this guy in a weird way. I think he he brings a, like, a little bit to the table. It's different. He's... He's kind of out there. I get it. I don't see him as a game player whatsoever. I don't see him bringing anything to the table related to game. I think he's going to be one of those, you know, diary room guys who are going to feed him those like little quirky lines. He's going to have those funny uh, or funny. They're not going to be really too funny lines, but they're supposed to come across funny, but not going to happen. Honestly, I don't see anything coming out of this guy uh, at all. Uh, game wise at all I don't see any gameplay in him uh, the only way I see this guy getting anywhere in the game is if people don't see him as a threat I think that's the only way maybe if a group sees him as a number uses him as a number but I just I see him getting under people's uh, under people's skin uh, I see him just he just doesn't know what he's in for and uh, you know just the whole thing he's saying he, he wants to float and uh, it's never been done being under the Raiders never been done all that stuff I don't think he understands the game I don't think he gets the game at all uh, I don't think he's gonna the only way I see him last lasting if people just don't see him as a threat and kind of just carry him along until his time is done and then he'll be out the, out the door I just don't see him bringing much to the table maybe a little bit of entertainment an episode or two I don't see much after that uh, unless the show really pushes his character as an entertainer and he gets a lot of screen time, it all comes down to editing, that's very, very possible. I can see him being very funny, uh, for sure. Game-wise, no. Um, anyway, yes, I've seen his videos, the Minion one and his Pikachu one. and the Sm I've seen all those videos, yes. So that's the part that's kind of giving me... Uh, 
you know, the impression that this guy can entertain. And I think he will be good at that part, but I don't watch it for that. I watch it for the gameplay and to see the strategy and how people kind of, you know, maneuver themselves in and out. Um, so that's my personal uh, view on why I, what I watch the show for. Some people watch it for the drama. Some people watch it for the entertainment. That's the beauty of the show. Everyone watches it for different reasons. I myself like to see the game players. So these are the kind of guys I don't usually cheer for because I don't see game in him at all. I'm going to give him like a 4 out of, a four out of 10, 3 out of 10. Uh, eh, that's the way it is. Not feeling him too much. Uh, I'm sure he'll bring a few bits of entertainment, but no, game-wise, not feeling him. Okay, my next one is Angela Rockstar. Okay, says she was given that name by her mom. Okay, but let's be real, she gave that name to herself. You could tell when Ross asked her the question, she kind of was like, uh, and if her lies in the house are as bad as that, she's in for a short, short stay. Um, yeah. Yeah, her, that, that lie was horrible, and she clearly gave herself that name. Uh, she's never seen the show before. She auditioned and says she's seen... Okay, she's seen a lot of episodes since she auditioned. Uh, so just a few months ago, whatever it is, whatever. Uh, says she's given birth three times with no epidural, which... You know what? I do have to give her credit for. Uh, birth is no joke. Uh, I've been... The, you know, my wife gave birth twice, and I was in the delivery room both times. Birth is no joke. No epidural is, uh, I give her a lot, a lot of credit because, man, the things a girl's got to go through through birth, wow, crazy. So she definitely can endure pain uh, for sure. I give her that because uh, that is no joke. Um, okay, so here's the thing. I think she's going to have a hard time either... Here's one of those characters, again, I think she's either going to get along with kind of the other kind of quirky people or kind of, you know, people that aren't the norm, I guess you want to call it, I don't know. Um, she's either going to get along well with them, or she's not going to get along with people. I think it's going to be very hit and miss with her. Either they're going to love her, or they're going to hate her. And I can actually see her being a week one uh, boot, to be honest with you. I could see her going out week one. I don't think she's going to stay too long, again, unless people don't see her as a threat. She's just going to kind of be in the house like another piece of furniture until um, it's her time to go. I don't I don't see gameplay from her. I don't see anything from her. And I, you know, the sad thing is, I see that a lot of that through a lot of these uh, people this season. A lot of people I was uh, watching their their videos, and I don't see a lot of game players. I find the games change so much. It's all about gimmicks now. It's all you know, and it's just it's not about the game like it used to be. And if you ask a lot of people, they all want the old Big Brother back, but th that stuff's gone. You get a lot of gimmicks now. You know, the rock star girl and all that stuff. Whatever it is, it's fine. Um, I just, I don't know, I don't see, I don't see game out of her, like a gamer, and again, that's why I watch it, so when I critique these, I'm critiquing on what I like to see, and it could be very different, some people could look at it and be like, man, that's awesome, that's what I like to see, and that's great, but I don't watch the show for, for that, I watch it for the gamers, so that's why it's very different, I give her a 2 out of 10, she says she's married, so there's no chance of a showman, so that's great, I went in married too, it's very, very doable, it's very easy, um, but she will miss her husband, I guarantee you, and she has kids too, she's gonna miss her kids, and that's another battle, and I will tell you something um in the house is a battle on its own but when you have kids and, and a husband or a wife or whatever it is you know that's a separate battle you're dealing with yes everyone has families a hundred percent i get it uh but your bond with your kids and your wife is a little different than you know a brother a sister a parent or friends whatever a dog a cat whatever so i feel her for that, I feel for her a lot. It's going to be a struggle, and I bet you it's going to come across very quickly that she's going to miss her kids and her husband. Um, it is a battle on its own. Um, so anyway, that being said, eh, I think she could be out the first week, first couple of weeks. I think she's going to be pre-jury. Um, yeah, that's uh, Angela Rockstar. Okay, now we are at Caitlin. She's a 24-year-old life coach. Okay, okay, I'm going to say something here. You know. I can only go by my own experience, but at 24, that's a little young to be a life coach. You know, I'm 35 years old now. I look back when I was 24, and I'm not saying that she thinks she knows everything, but when I was 24, I thought I knew everything. I thought I was the smartest, you know, and this and that. I'm 35 now. I look back at 24. I knew nothing. I absolutely knew nothing. I had no life experience at all. So for someone to be a life coach at 24... Uh, I don't know if it's like one of those things like, oh, good job, or it's like, well, you really haven't experienced anything yourself. How can you be a life coach? So I don't know about that, but, you know, good for her. But, yeah, at 24, I can speak for myself. I had zero life experience, but I thought I knew it all at that moment. So anyway, that's that. Uh, okay, she says she's super sensitive to people's auras. 
Oh, okay, so you know when when I hear that, I think of a Nick. If you guys watch Big Brother Canada, you know from Big Brother Canada season two, a Nick was on it. She's like a she's like a Reiki master, I believe at that at, at that time, and that's the vibe I get with her. She's like a Nick two point um, And Nick did go out first in her season, and again, it's one of those things that can rub people the wrong way. And it's not. It's just it's just people that are different. It's it's just that's life. It's just life. And, uh, you know, I'm sure she's a sweet, sweet, sweet girl. She sounds very nice. Uh, but I just don't see her fitting in. This is a game of lions and sheep. And the lions will eat the sheep. And it's just, that's the way it is. And I just, I see her again. She could, and that, you know, it's funny because there's about four or five people in this cast I could see as being the week one uh, boot. So it's funny that all, there's four of them that to me was like, yeah, these guys are probably going to be the week one. They're going to be voted out, but they can technically make it the week four or five jury even. So uh, I, I don't know. I just, I see her, she could be gone uh, week one. Um, I don't see her and Angela getting along. I see, you know, Angela's more like the party girl, the rock star, whatever. This girl's more of like the, the calm, the meditating and stuff like that. So I just, I don't see their personalities meshing well. I can see a lot of friction there. I can even see both of them on the block week one. Um, I can easily see them getting into a feud. Okay. Um, yeah, and she seems, like I, I even I say here, she seems like a sweet, caring person, uh, which is great in the outside world. But, yeah, usually the characters in the house become prey, for sure. Uh, she has a boyfriend, so there's no chance of a showmance. And I'm going to give her a 2 out of 10. I'm sure she's a great, a great, great girl. But, again, I'm here about gameplay. And I just don't see her bringing gameplay. It's kind of just like, a, a, not a, I don't even want to say a gimmick character. But, you know, it's about the auras and the, you know. And the, I don't, I just, I don't see her there to win the game uh, at all. So I'm going to give her a 2 out of 10, zero gameplay from her, probably even zero entertainment value, and a very, very short stay. That's my prediction with her. Okay, so next we have Brett. This guy is a stud, very good looking guy. Uh, he seems very social. Uh, he seems very calm and inviting when he talks. Again, I only saw the Ross interview. I have no, I didn't watch his. I didn't uh, even look at his written bio, bio or any other interviews he did. Just the Ross uh, interview. He seemed very calm, very inviting, easy to talk to, which is key in the house. You have to be very, very easy to talk to uh, and and inviting, so people will want to sit beside you and talk to you. Maybe they'll want to buddy up with you. They feel comfortable with you. They'll want to work with you. And you know, I get that from this guy. He seems very inviting, and I think. People are going to really want to work with him. Um, he says he'll do whatever it takes to win, which is the right attitude. You're there to do a job. Do the job. I like that. I think the girls are going to love him. I think the guys are either going to get along with him or feel threatened by him. So that is a big, um, big factor here. But I could also see him being in a majority alliance. I think, uh, you know, like again, the girls are going to love him. He's probably going to find himself a showman um, and have some numbers to work with for sure. Uh, yeah, he says he's very single and there's a chance for a showman's. Uh, so yeah, for sure he's going to do the showman's. Um, okay, I like the guy. Uh, he seems very genuine. Um, I'm not... Uh, no, I don't think he's going to be like this great player, okay? But I think he's going to have a lot of power in the house. There's a difference. I don't think he's going to, you know, be like this big mastermind, this big strategic player. But I think he's going to have a lot of say of what happens in the house, which gives him the power. Um, so that's where, you know, it's just, what is he going to do with this power? I mean, I, I could be way wrong. Again, I've only seen the Ross interview, but I see people, I, I feel like people are going to want to work with him, which gives him the power, which gives him the numbers, uh, which will give him safety. So, um, and I, yeah, so I think he's going to do pretty well. Um, okay. But here's the thing that bothered me with him is he said he'd rather come second and be loved by America Buddy, what are you doing, man? You're here to do a job. Do a job. Who cares what America thinks of you? You know, you're here to win $500,000. You know, America loving you isn't going to pay your bills. America loving you isn't going to, you know, buy you a house or whatever you got to do, get you ahead in life. It doesn't do that, man. You need the, you need to, you're in there to do a job, do the job, come out with the prize. Who cares what the crowd thinks of you? And I hope he plays to the house and not to the crowd for the love. I hope that. Okay, so I'd give him an 8 out of 10. This is what I say. I'd give him an 8 out of 10, but because he says he'd rather be second and uh, have the love from America, it's going to go down to a 4 out of 10. Uh, I just I don't like that answer. He has everything going for him, I think, to do well in the house, 
But if he'd rather be loved than win, I hate that answer. No, uh, 4 out of 10. But I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to do well. But uh, anyway, that's Brett. 4 out of 10. Good luck, buddy. I think you're going to need it. Okay, my next one is Sam. She's a welder. She says she's watched some clips of Big Brother, but then starts naming some old players like Jerry and, uh, and Dr. Will. So, uh, you know, I guess she knows the players of the older seasons, but she says she's only seen a few clips here and there. So that's kind of weird. But she knows like Jerry and Dr. Will and all the older players. Um, okay, I really like Sam. I like how when she talks, again, like I was just saying about Brett, she's very inviting. So, you know, you want to sit down and talk to her. Um, and when you're in that house, you need someone like that. You need someone to talk to because there's nothing to do in there. and You actually go crazy. And I know the fans don't understand this and they never will unless you play. Is there so much downtime in there that personal bonds are so important and so key in the house. And someone like Sam who has, you know, a good social game. Like I'm watching her talk to Ross and I'm interested in her conversation. Just her body language, her tone of voice, um, everything. I just, I really liked it. I really, really liked um her body language and everything in her social game. Now, here's the thing though, is I don't see a game player. Again, I don't see a game player. I don't see many game players, which I don't like. I like to see the game the way it's supposed to be played and uh, just people that are there to play. That's what I like. So um, I think she's gonna get along with a lot of house guests. Um, it, seems, it's, uh, it seems that she's genuinely sweet. I just uh, I just don't see her going to make moves, and that's the part that bothers me. She's not going to go in there and make these moves uh, to like further her game, cut people when she has to, things like that. I think she's just going to kind of go with the house, or uh, just what am I vote? Who am I voting for this week? Okay, that's who I'm voting for this week. Perfect. She's going to be one of those, just kind of follow along with the crowd, not make any decisions on her own. That's how I feel. Again, on these little interviews, uh, which I hope I'm wrong, uh, but that's the way I see it. Um, okay, she says she'd rather win and be hated, but won't do anything against her morals and knows a lot of little girls will be watching. I like that a lot because I said the same thing. I said, you know, I will do anything to win, but there's a line I won't cross because there are young kids watching, you know, my niece, my nephew, my own kids. And, you know, and when you're in there, for some reason, these kids, not even just mine, I'm talking all across Canada or the States, they are looking up to these people. And trust me, there's no reason to look up to any player in Big Brother Canada or America. They're just regular people like you watching this right now. We're all regular people just with a big opportunity. And that's all it is. And we're no role models. I mean, a lot of these people, when you meet them, a lot of them aren't role models. But I, I don't want to get into that. That's another story. But, you know, so I like the fact that she says, you know, there will be a lot of girls, little girls watching. And uh, she won't do anything against her morals because people do look up. Uh, to the people on the TV. I like that a lot. So that's a really good answer. Okay, so I'll give her um, a 5 out of 10. Uh, simply because I just... I think she'll do well socially. I just don't see her doing anything in the game. I just see her just... No game sense, which sucks. Because I really like her on a personal level. I hope I get to meet her after the show. Uh, she seems very, very, very cool. And just great to talk to. Game-wise, uh, I don't see too much. Okay, my next, I hope I'm saying it right, is Fosse or Fosse? Fosse? I hope I'm saying it right. Sorry, buddy. He, okay, so he got cut in the finals for Survivor. Um, and then they told him they have another show for him. And he was supposed, supposedly he was an alternate for Big Brother 19. I, I, from what I hear, he was Josh's alternate, maybe. I don't know. But he was an alternate for BB19. But said he didn't want to be an alternate either. He's on or he's not. Something like that. I don't know the whole details. But anyway, he was supposed to be on. He got cut at finals for Survivor. So obviously they see something in this guy. Survivor is more challenge based and stuff like that. So they see something in this guy. So he's definitely one to watch out for. Uh, he says his strengths are being able to get along with a lot of people. He says he obviously used to play college football. I mean, why obviously? I mean, I don't get why he said obviously he's playing college football, whatever. Uh, maybe there's something behind that, but I don't know. It wasn't obvious to me. Um, says his weakness will be his pride getting in the way. Okay, so he says he gets along with a lot of people, so he's probably pretty. He's probably a pretty popular guy. Probably has a lot of friends. Um, probably has a little bit of an ego, a big personality. So that's the thing. I think this guy has a lot of potential. Uh, just being social, people liking him, uh, co uh, competition-wise. But if he has a big ego and he has a short fuse, 
You know, those kind of people, the big personalities, usually find themselves out the door quick. So this guy, I think, has the right tools to do well. It's just a matter of, of him, uh, you know, his weaknesses kind of getting in the way. Uh, because a player like that is built for this game. Social, competitive, uh, people just... If you can attract people to you, um, that's very, very, very important. Um, so yeah, so his weakness would be his pride getting in the way. Eh, that could be a big, big problem. Um, he says he's competitive and might come out too fast. So what he's saying is he might uh, come out the gate too fast. Like he might start playing the game way too fast. And I tell you, at the beginning, everyone's on an even playing field. So here's the thing. You can't go in the house being like, oh, this person, I can smash this person, this person, this person, this person. You can't do that. Everyone, Everyone's there for a reason. Everyone has a spot in that house for a reason. Everyone is an equal competitor and has an equal shot of winning the game. So in the first weeks, when someone comes in really hot and really fast, trying to make moves right away, everyone can be like, whoa, 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 I don't like this pace. Why don't we just get this guy out? He's playing way too hard, way too fast. Devin is a perfect example. I believe that was 16. Uh, everyone's like, this guy's got to go. Um, you know, the Messiah, whatever his name was, the guy from BB, whatever it was. Uh, same thing. You know, things like that. You know, people that come out way too hard, way too fast. It's an easy, easy option for people like, hey, we got to get this guy out. Everyone, like, this guy's annoying or bothering us. Let's just get this guy out. I don't like this pace. Let's slow it down a little bit. So that could be another big downfall for this guy. Um, says he's single, uh, and here's the thing, he's a very good looking guy, I think, uh, you know, there's a few girls in the house that are looking for showmances, there's a few guys that are looking for showmances, so usually, uh, the, they pair them up when they're casting, they're pairing these people up, kind of, or hoping that these people will kind of, you know, connect, so usually when they say they're look, they, they're okay with a showmance, or they're looking for showmance, they'll find one, um, usually that's how it works, um, he says he's a very loyal per person, which is huge, I'll tell you right now, uh, playing both times, I had loyal people by my side. You need that. And I always gave my loyalty too. Uh, loyalty is something you can't buy in that game. It's very rare because it's a cutthroat game and a lot of people will cut you at any moment when they have to. If you can find that ride or die person or that loyal person that's with you to the end. Uh, I had my boy Bobby Halad on season 3 and my boy Kevin Martin on season 5 who ended up winning season 5. And if you have that ride or die person, that person you can literally be open with literally put your game out there and be like this is what we got to do bounce ideas back and forth and you have two heads working on the game instead of one uh loyal loyal people that are together like you can actually trust each other two different views of the game two different aspects and viewpoints and perspectives of the game that's huge so if you can have a loyal person on your side and you have an equally loyal person on the other side it's a very dangerous combo uh because you can have two heads looking at the game uh and figuring things out which is huge uh, so that he's a very loyal person is very, very big, uh, but it can also work against you at, at the same time. Okay. So it's hard for me to read this guy just because of some of his answers. You know, he's saying he's going to come out too hot. Uh, he's kind of got a little bit of an ego from what I'm reading. I could be wrong. So I, to me, he's either an eight out of 10 or a two out of 10. And that's the thing. If he comes out too hot, he's a two or a one out of 10. If he can kind of pace himself right. Um, he's an 8, 9 out of 10. I think he has the right tools. At the same time, I think he has the right weaknesses to work against them. So very, uh, there's a big variable with this guy, but I'm excited to see how he plays. I think he's going to do well, and I think he's going to be one of those memorable players um, for sure. And that is Fosse. I hope I'm saying your name right, buddy. I'm sorry. So that's uh, Fosse. Right, so now we're on to Rachel. Um, she instantly knew she was in the diary room. Uh... She says she's uh, been a big fan since season one. She seems okay. She seems very confident and has a great personality. I really like. I really really like Rachel. She seemed very bubbly, very you know, quick answers, sharp answers. Uh, I I really liked her. I liked the vibe uh, I got from her. Uh, she says she knows jury management is the key to winning. Bingo. She nailed it. Listen, I don't care what any fan or anybody says. Jury management. Is everything okay I've been there twice I've been to jury twice I know what it's like in there I, I I know what they say in jury and how they act in jury and then when they come out of the house and they vote and then what they say on social media and it's total crap trust me jury management is 
everything. Uh, people won't want to give you $500,000 if you're a prick to them or a dick or an ass, whatever you want to call it, to them and pick on them and all that stuff. Nobody's going to give you the money in the end. That's the way it is. You treat them like shit on the way out, they're going to laugh at you at finale when they're not giving you the money. That's the way it is. Uh, jury management is everything. That's for sure. Um, she says she knows she has to relate to everyone in the house and says she knows how to talk to people, which is key. I've gone over that before in other house guests. Just relating to people on a personal level is huge. Uh, just how you talk to people, it's huge. Bang on, right answer again. Uh, she says her weakness is she's very emotional and thinks with her heart and not with her head sometimes. Okay, that's a big, big downfall because these are people in there that they're not going to, hopefully that everybody in there is, is focusing on the game and not caring about other people's feelings and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so she's thinking with her heart instead of her head. That could be a big, big problem because you got to go in, get the job done and get out, collect your check, go to the bank, cash it, see you later. Uh, feelings will be hurt. So uh, that's a that's the part I'm a little worried. She thinks with her heart over her head. Maybe she's going to find some guy in there that she likes and it could screw up her game and her mindset and everything. Hey, that's life. That's the way it is. Um... She's looking for a showman's. Okay, well, there you go. So that part, uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, it, listen, showman's work. They, they definitely, definitely work, especially early on in the game. Uh, a lot of people will want to work with a showman's because it's, it's a couple of numbers already locked in. So if you get along with one, you get another number with it that comes with it. So showman's definitely work early on. Usually they keep you safe for the first little bit, but then you do become a target and that's the problem. But usually, usually, not all times, the, the target is usually the guy over the girl. So usually when a girl's in a showman, it's a little bit of protection. Not all the time, but usually. So um, it's not a bad thing if she's in a showman. Maybe she can use that kind of as a shield. Uh, and then if they were to go on the block and the guy would go out, then she can kind of reevaluate and reshift her strategy uh, and kind of fit in somewhere else. It could work. I just hope that her heart doesn't take over and, you know, uh, you see people giving their game away to you know, either the, the showman's if it's a guy or a girl that they're involved with, whatever it is, they kind of give their game away for this person, the game ends, they, they're still not together, they don't get along or whatever out of the house, and it was all for nothing. I hate seeing that happen. So hopefully she thinks more with her head than her heart. Um, I could see her and maybe Brett getting in a showman's. Um, I don't know. He's, he's, you know, he's a stud. He seems like a good person. She's very attractive. She seems like a good person. Again, I only seen a few minute video, so I don't, really don't know these people. Um, but from what I got in that few minutes, I could see them getting along for sure. Um, okay. Uh, she's going to get an eight out of 10 for me. I would give her a 10 out of 10, but she says she's looking for that showman's and that she thinks with her heart over her head. That's where she loses those couple of points. But uh, I, I really like this girl. I'm actually cheering for her. This is my girl. Uh, this is who I'm cheering for throughout the season. And this is my pick to win. If she can keep her head in the game, I think she could do really, really well. To me, it seems like she's there to play. I hope she shows up to play. And uh, I have high hopes for her. Love, Rachel. And really, really want to see her do well. Um, so that's that. She says her pet peeves are rude and condescending people. Uh, mine were the same things when I was going in. That's my pet peeves and, and uh, people I didn't get along with. Um, and here's the thing. She said she'd rather lose and have America love her. That answer I don't like again. It's a, the wrong answer. But I can let it slide for her. I think she's going to do well. I hope she's going to do well. And I hope when she goes in there, she kind of gets that hunger like, hey, especially when she gets deeper in the game, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to win this uh, and forget the lose and, and be have America lover and just go for it. I hope she wins. Uh, and Rachel is my pick. Now we're at Angela. I think her is Angela or Angie, maybe. I don't know, but she's a fitness model. Uh, says she's a huge fan of Big Brother. She also says she remembers as a kid trying to watch with her parents. But her parents wouldn't let her because she had to do homework. Okay, well, here's the thing. I I, I kind of find that kind of interesting because Big Brother's usually in the summer when there's no school. So who's doing homework in the summer? I don't know. But hey, you got to take her word for it. Whatever. She says she's doing homework uh, while her parents watch Big Brother and they let her watch. Whatever. Okay. Um, she says she gets along better with the guys and uh, thinks she finds she'll find herself in an all-guys alliance. Okay. Um, and I can see that happening. She's a very attractive girl. Um, she seems very cool with the guys. 
And, uh, you know, like she just has that kind of vibe on her. And I think she could get along with them and find herself, maybe not an all guys alliance, but like a, a guy majority alliance, or maybe even the, the, the majority alliance. I could see her fitting in there pretty well. Um, so I think she's going to do okay in that sense. Um, she says she was a professional pole vaulter, um, and wants to throw the first bunch of challenges and wants to come across as a ditzy blonde. That's perfect. That's actually perfect. Um, you don't want to win the first few. Some people do, whatever, but you kind of want to, you know, you don't want to get too much, uh, action in the first few weeks. Um, and she wants to play, uh, come across as a ditzy blonde. Perfect. You never want to show people how smart you are. You never, ever, ever want to do that because once people catch on, you become a threat. So if they think you're just some ditzy blonde or just for me, I was some old guy. They thought I was some old guy. I just didn't know what I was doing. They kind of forget about you and they kind of think, not maybe forget about you, but they kind of think like, ah, oh, we can get rid of that person later. They're not really a big threat. We can beat them later. We can beat them later. Well, the problem is when later happens, uh, they actually lose their momentum and you have more momentum than they do, or they're probably already out of the house because they're the bigger target. So, uh, good for her that she wants to be the ditzy blonde and throw challenges. That's good answers. Um, she says there's no chance for a showman's. But she's willing, willing to put her game in a guy's hand. Sorry, she's not willing to put her game in a guy's hands and risk it all. Perfect. See, I like this girl. She has the right answers. Um, she she's focused on the game. Her head's on the her mind's on the prize, and that's perfect. That's what you want. So I like that. I like the fact she's saying no. I don't want to show mats. I'm not getting distracted. I'm here to win the game. I'm gonna win the game, and I really really like that. Her strengths are being physically and mentally strong. Uh, she was a pro athlete. That's huge. Uh, to be a pro athlete, you really do have to be, um, you have to have a lot of mental fortitude for sure. Uh, physical strength, obviously, because she was in the sports. Uh, so that's very good. Pro athletes are definitely ahead of the game uh, when it comes to, you know, because they're, they're bred for it and they're built for it and they train for it mentally and physically. Uh, so I really, really, really like that. I think, she, okay, so I think she's going to do really well. I think she's going to find herself in the majority alliance. And I think she's going to be one of the people that is here to play, which I like. Again, I really like that. So I think her and Rachel so far are the two gamers that we've talked about. And I think she's going to do well. I give her an 8 out of 10. And uh, if it wasn't for Rachel, I'd be voting for her or cheering for her. I'm actually cheering for her too, but um, she's my second pick to win. I think she's going to do fantastic this season. So I'm excited to see her play. Okay, so now we're on to Bailey. She's, uh, okay, so Big Brother found her on Instagram, uh, and she's binge-watched the show since. So she's not too familiar with the show, is what I'm gathering. So she probably doesn't understand the, you know, uh, the dynamics, the, uh, the social aspect maybe, or I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know too much. If they found her on Instagram and she's just getting into it now, she's definitely behind, uh, definitely she fell behind for sure. So I don't know how she's going to do in that sense. Uh, she's single and she's not, not looking for a showman's, but she's not looking either. So basically if it happens, it happens. She's not going in there to look for a showman's, but Hey, if it happens, it happens. Fair enough. I give her that. Okay. Uh, she says she wants to be good, but not good enough for people target her and she wants to lay low. Okay, that, that's a good answer. You know, you don't want to, yeah, you want to be a player, but you don't want to be the front runner because once people notice you, uh, yeah, they'll target you. That's uh, that's the right answer. She was Miss Missouri USA. She's very competitive. Uh, she says she's going to have a strong social game. Her biggest weakness is boys. She says she doesn't know how to handle boys. She's the youngest of four girls and went to an all-girls school. Okay, so I get what she's saying that... Um, you know, she's been around girls her whole life. She had no boys in her school. She has no brothers. I get what she's saying. Um, so that'll be interesting to see kind of how she plays in this game, especially when she's living with eight of them, eight random boys. So that'll be an interesting dynamic to see how she gets along with them. Maybe she gets along great with them. Maybe she just doesn't get along great at all. That's a very interesting dynamic uh, just to see how that plays out. Um, okay, it says in the outside world, she doesn't hold her tongue, but in here she will. Okay, see, when you say that, you don't know that. How can you say she's going to hold her tongue when she gets in there? She's never been in there. She's never played before. She's never been in the house. So if you don't bite your tongue in the outside world, trust me, it's going to be hard to bite your tongue on the inside of the house. So the fact that she says she bite your tongue, I don't believe that. I think we're going to see some fireworks out of her, and I think it's going to come out pretty quick, uh, simply because she says she doesn't bite her tongue, and I could see that being a problem. Um... 
you know, 90 days in that house is a long time or 99 days, whatever it is, is a long, long time to bite your tongue. Okay, so I'm gonna give her uh, I'm gonna give her kind of a low rating simply because I don't think she's there to play the game. I think she's there for other reasons. If they found her on Instagram, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, it could work. It absolutely could work. I just don't see her being a game player. Uh, and the whole, you know, she doesn't bite her tongue. I think it's gonna come out to bite her in the end. So I'm gonna give her a five out of ten. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just don't see her being a, a big game player or anything like that. I see her kind of just being there. Uh, just kind of, you know, until her time is ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's Bailey, and it'll be interesting to see how she plays. Okay, now these, I only read the bios, so I didn't even get a visual of these people, basically how they talk, and just uh, their body language, things like that. So these are going to be a little trickier for me to do, because I'm just going by a written bio, and you know how it is when you text someone and you write, you could take, you know, you could take it totally out of context, or not even a comment, but just the tone of it, you know, is it sarcastic, is it not? So I'm just going by written bios here. So this one could be a little hit and miss. They could all be hit and miss. I mean, again, I'm only seeing a few minute clip of them talking to Ross in the diary room. They're probably nervous and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, so this is the bios from paper. So these could be a little differently. Okay. So when I'm reading this, I like how he says he's a huge fan and started watching last summer. I know that sounds crazy, but he says he's been watching a ton, a ton of seasons and he sounds like he gets it because he's watching the seasons and just the answers he was giving, it's like he was watching it to dissect it. He wasn't just watching it just to be familiar with it. He was watching it just to kind of figure out how these people are playing and getting through the game and I like that. Um, you know, he's saying he gets it and the way he was doing that, but again, it's different executing it than having the right answer. I could say I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this and that and this, which is great on paper, but executing it, that is where it counts. So that'll be interesting to see if he can do it. He doesn't wanna be in a showman's and says this isn't The Bachelor. He wants the money and that's what he's here for and I love that. This is a guy that gets it. Just go in, do the job, go home, see you later. Get your money and go home. <clears throat> and I like that about this guy. Um, he knows it's a job, it's a business, it's a job. I like that, and I have a lot of high hopes for this guy for sure. Um, he says he wants to be in an unseen alliance and knows managing jury is the key to winning. This guy again has all the right answers, and then again, it's is he gonna follow through with it? It's easy to say what you're gonna do, especially when you're in an interview, you can say whatever you wanna say. You can make yourself sound like the best player, you can make yourself sound like a dummy, it's, just, it's, it's up to you. But when you go in the game, that's what counts. Not what you say, but what you do. Talk is cheap actions speak so um, he has all the right answers and it's just a matter of fact it's just a matter of seeing if he can you know follow through and do it um, but again they're the right answers says he's not here to impress America I love that that's 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 amazing that's the right answer and uh, by any chance and uh, it sounds like he's here to play yeah there are people okay so this is the thing. I watch the game. Again, I've said this a few times. Shows. I watch the game to see people play the game. That's why I watch it. I don't watch it for people to sit on a couch, cause drama, argue, fight. Who cares? There's enough of that in my day-to-day -day life. Who cares for that crap? You know, uh, I'm there to watch people play the game, and this guy's here to play. I love it. Uh, I, You know, uh, I'm not here for, like, the gimmick casting and all that stuff. Okay. I want this guy to do well. Um, I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 because he has the right answers. Do I think he's going to win? Probably not. I think he's going to, you know, uh, end up being a threat, you know, middle to end game and they're going to get rid of him. Uh, and he's not going to have a chance to play to the end. But I think there's potential in him. I think he's there to play and that's what I respect. So I really like this guy. I want him to do really, really, really well. I just don't know if he's going to be able to get to the end uh, just simply because uh, I think he's just going to run out of real estate and become a target and go before the end, but he will be there to play. And that is Winston. Okay, now we're on to Scotty again. This is a written bio. This could be way off. I don't know his personality, even how he talks, his body language, nothing. So he says Chicken George is his favorite player, which is interesting. That kind of gives me an idea of what kind of a person he is if if there's any relation, um, says he has a lot of pride. And when people tell him what to do, he says, no, buddy, not good, not good. Cause people are going to tell you how to vote. People are going to tell you what to do in that house. If you were going to be like, no, I'm not doing this. You're gone. Okay. 
literally, uh, that's all I have on this guy, which is kind of weird and crazy. So I have that Chicken George is his favorite, and um, he has a lot of pride, and when people tell him what to do, he says no. Okay, how do you critique this? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't see too much out of this guy. I see him. He's going to get into some arguments. Uh, probably rub people the wrong way. Listen, big brother, it's a game of give and take. Yes, you obviously have your own agenda in mind and what you want to do uh, to get to the end. But you have to bend. You have to bend because you're not going to be in power every week. And in fact, you're probably not going to be in power 80% of the time. So you kind of have to sway and go with the flow a little bit with kind of pushing your agenda, but not to the point where it's like it's going to get you in trouble. And if people are going to say, this guy has to go this week. And you know what? If you're going to be like, no, just because someone's telling you what to do, uh, you're in trouble, buddy. So this guy... Eh, I don't see him doing very well. I don't see him being a big game player. I just don't see much out of this guy. So, um, yeah, I, I don't have too high hopes for this guy. I'm probably going to give him like a 3 maybe, 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10. I just don't see too much coming out of this guy. Uh, I know I don't have too much on him, but that's all I got. And that that's just the way it is. So, uh, 2, 3, maybe 4 out of 10 for Scott. Okay, we got Chris Swaggy C. Says he's been watching since Season 8. And it was his first time auditioning and he got on. So obviously this guy has something in him to get on uh, the first time that they saw him. Uh, they obviously see something in this guy, which is good. There's a lot of great players that have auditioned six, seven, eight times before they got on the show. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, but if this guy, you know, if he really drew their attention right away that fast, maybe there is something to this guy. Um, says he's not here for the money. He's here to entertain people. Okay. You lost me right there. You lost me right there. You're here to entertain people. Ah, that, that's crazy to me, man. You go to the show to win the prize. Why else are you there? Uh, who cares about entertaining the crowd? That's why I looked at it. I wasn't a very entertaining player, but I was there to play the game. Uh, I played to the people in the house, not to the audience. Um, says he's playing the game to get more followers and wants to win HOH Week 1. See... You know, here's the thing, man. I don't, I don't know. This guy's giving all the wrong answers. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this guy right now. Okay, says he's here. Okay, says he's from the hood. And he's seen a lot of dark things. Okay, that is, you know, and I know this is going to sound weird, but it's key. You know, street smarts is huge. You know, uh, I came from dark places too in my past. And I felt going into the house, I had a lot more street smarts than a lot of the people I played with. And it's key because when books, you know, people wouldn't say, oh, someone's smart. They always think of book smarts in school. But you know what? The street smarts is very, very, very important. Uh, if you have the street smarts and you know how to hustle people or manipulate people, it really translate. It translates very, very well into into the house and you know this guy has some street smarts it that is a huge advantage already for him uh on top of other people he knows how to manipulate and he knows how to hustle from what he's saying uh, that is huge man that is huge so if he can bring that into the house he has a leg up on the on the others already uh that is awesome i like that um, okay so here's the thing if he were here to play the game i'd give this guy a 10 out of 10 i think he has the right tools to do well in the house but because he says you know he's here to entertain people and he's here just to get more followers come on man what are you doing you know that's the part that just I, I don't like so if he didn't say that and he's like i'm here to play the game i'd give this guy a 10 out of 10 uh because of that i'm gonna give him a 2 out of 10 i think this guy he's gonna want to cause the drama cause the fights cause the arguments which I tell you right now, he's going to get a lot of screen time if that's the case, because the show as a whole loves that. They love the drama. That's what they love to show to the crowd. So he'll get a lot of screen time. He may even get credit he doesn't deserve uh, simply because of all the screen time he's getting. He's going to probably narrate the show a little bit, things like that. He might get the credit that way, but... Um, you know what people are not going to put up with that very long i'll tell you firsthand when you're living in this kind of environment those are the people you want to get out the people that are high drama and that just they're not you know people that aren't going to be fun to be around with those are the people you want out just for your own peace of mind uh you're going to want to get rid of them so i don't know it's i'm very hit and miss with them i think if you can just focus on the game he'd do very very well but if he just wants to entertain see you later buddy pre-jury see you later uh which is a shame uh, but anyway, that's uh, Swaggy C. Chris, that's my take on him. Okay, now we're on to Steve. He's an under, he was an undercover cop. Okay, says he's an undercover cop. Okay, so what is he, the Derek type of undercover cop? Or is he going to be like the Glenn kind of cop? Uh, let's see. So he says Boogie's his favorite player. 
uh, because even the people that knew they couldn't trust him did. That's a good answer. I like that. Uh, and he says now he's a university debate teacher uh, and he plans on driving people more and more nuts with debates until they flip out and become the target. Okay, I have my answer. Uh, he's going to be the Glenn cop. If your plan is to drive people crazy, uh, to make them flip out and make them a target, yeah, buddy, you're in for it, man. Uh, first boot. I give this guy first out. So there's there's four or five people I, I think could be the first out, so that's pretty interesting. There's a lot of duds I find this season. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this guy will be good. I don't know. Uh, but from what I read in this bio, again, I'm not seeing a video. I'm just reading on this guy. Uh, I'm going to give this guy like a 1 or a 2 out of 10. That's his strategy. Horrible strategy. Um, I don't know. I just don't feel it. I don't feel it. But, okay, so that's that guy. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I just, I don't know. I don't see too much in him. Here's the thing. I'm going to do my final thoughts on, on all this, okay? So I see a lot of duds. And, I'm, uh, and you know, Robin's a great, great, she's great at casting. She's great at what she does. But I just, something about this cast and again, this is just bios. I have to wait till I watch the show. But from what I'm seeing in this reveal, there's nobody except for there's a couple of people that I'm kind of really liking. But there's a lot of duds. I find a lot of duds and waste of a space for a cast um, in, from what I saw in these bios. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm just, I don't know if I'm getting over this whole Big Brother thing. I don't know. Or what it is. I'm just, I'm not feeling the cast at all. I just really hope they bring it. Uh, some strategy. There's, like I said, a couple of players. But I'm not feeling the cast this year. Uh, I find there's too many gimmick uh, casts rather than players. They don't have the game players. They have, you know, just little gimmicks here and there, which, whatever. I get it. If they want to bring something fresh and new. I get it. Uh, I'm just not feeling it. But anyway, that's my, my cast assessment. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know I kind of rushed through a few of them pretty quick. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to try to do some recaps throughout the season. I don't know if I'm going to do every week. I'm very, very, very busy. Uh, maybe I'll do a few, maybe every few weeks. I'll do one every few weeks, something like that. I don't know. I'll have to see what I'm doing. I'm doing other podcasts and stuff too. So I'm very, very busy with all that stuff. But um, definitely subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Who do you think? Who do you like? And who do you think is going to win? Uh, who do you think is going to be first out? I literally have five of them in mind that I think are going to go out first. So for me, it's hard to even tell. But yeah, leave a comment. Uh, you know, Say what you think. Who do you think has the best shot? Who has the worst shot? Who do you think is going to get along? Who do you think is not going to get along? Uh, things like that. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, again, hit that sub button. And let's follow along for this ride because I got some more videos coming. Guys, have a great one. Let's have a great season. Check out my other videos. If you do plan on auditioning, I have tips on how to get on, uh, tips on playing the game. I have videos like that. Check them out. Do whatever you want to do, guys. Have a great one. Have a good weekend. Let's have a good season. Peace.